So here in this tutorial we're going to add and look at how we position type in Final Cut Pro 10. Now there's a couple of things to consider here because we can move things around in different ways um, in Final Cut and with type that can get a little bit confusing. So let's go ahead, we're going to add some type over the top of this short piece of video here. So the first thing you'll need to do when you want to add some type is come up to the top left of your screen where we have our libraries, our sound effects and our type and generators. Now I have some plugins in here, we're not going to be looking at any of these kind of more advanced plugins. We're going to be looking at the, the basic uh, titles and adding those and moving those around. So if we scroll down here, we'll come to the, the basic titles. And if you can't find these easily, and um, we're looking for basic title here, then you can also just type in a search up at the top. And if you type in basic, then it's going to list the basic 3D lower third and basic title, which is what we're going to use here. So to add a title, we can do it in a couple different ways. Uh, first is to drag it down. The other is to click here to add a connected clip, which basically does the same thing. And obviously we can also add titles um, as our main storyline as well, if we want that title to appear on a black background rather than on a video background. So we'll just pop this up as well. So it's layered over the top and we can see the word title listed there. So we'll just trim this down so it just runs across that one clip and now we're going to talk about a couple of things. So the first thing is how do we edit that type. So we need to come up to the inspector at the top right where we have a few different options. So for the type um, we have the main video options where we can still modify things like the opacity, the transform options, so rotating things and positioning things, um, and then also things like cropping and stuff like that which can be useful if you want your type to wipe on. Um, we're going to come to the type options here. We've got a a T here which basically shows us any published parameters that would come with that piece of type. There's none for this basic title. And then we have the type editor here. So as you move around you'll want to make sure that you can see uh, this option up here for your title text. And we can type in one or two places. We can either type up here in the text box or we can double click in our type box here and we'll just type in horses. And this text is pretty basic, it doesn't wrap, so if we keep typing it's just going to flow right off the edge of the screen. Um, we have to put in our own line breaks if we want to add in line breaks. Um, and you can see at the moment our text is centered. And um, we can adjust those options um, down here in the, the type box that we have here. So we'll just come to the middle of our screen here and just stretch this out so we can see a little bit more of our screen here. And what we'll see here now when we scroll down is the basic options for things like uh, the face that we want to use. Um, so we can change that to any of the fonts you have installed. We can also change the, the cut of that face, so whether it's italic or light or bold, so on and so forth. Um, and we also have some predefined options up at the top here as well. And when you're scrolling, what you'll find is if you try and scroll in this window, it's not going to scroll back up. You need to hover over the area below the text box or the area above the text box to actually scroll that window or use the scroll bar on the right hand side. And you'll see up at the top here we have some predefined options for our type. So we have some bold options which we can use and then 2D styles and 3D styles. And then also if we modify or design a look for our type we can save that appearance attribute and those options are within our type as well. So we'll start with the bold um, option here. You can see there's kind of some uh, fun different options, but I'm going to stick with kind of the basic um, option that we have here. So we'll come back to bold. And if we want to move our type around now, you can see when we've got our type highlighted, we can use this little dot in the middle here to move it around. Our text is aligned to the center, so it's going to snap to that central spot. And this is different to moving the alignment with the transform tool, which we can do as well. So you can see I can transform my text here. But what's going to happen when we do this is we're losing the edge of that type box. So if we do things like aligning it left and start to type out more, then we could be cropping our text. What you might also see, we'll just reset these options here. So I'm going to reset the position here and turn off my transform options. We might also see when we're moving around, when we hover over our text box, this lighter area um, that we can use to move it around as well. And this is basically repositioning the text in the same way. Okay, So we've got two ways of moving the text. One is with the text 
box um, and one is with the video transform options which can also move things around and you want to start by moving the text box around rather than the video transform tools until you're doing something like animation so we can align things to the left we can align things to the right if we want to align things to the left and then position it differently um, we can change the the position of that and that's what we're doing you can see when we move this to the left here or move it to the right we're actually modifying this x position within the text options itself okay we've got all the options for tracking um, in here as well for line spacing and then also for baseline shift and stuff like that so if you're used to formatting type you'll be familiar with some of these options down here we have rotation which allows us to rotate on the x y and z axis our text and we'll just reset these and i think we'll move this text just down a little bit so it's in this area of the screen where we can read it a bit better there's a couple of tricks for making things more legible on the screen especially if you've got white areas of the screen like this car behind or the sky in the background here you can see when we place the text over the top there it becomes virtually invisible so if we want to modify that and we can use a color correction and a mask so that we're only affecting the little bit of the video behind that text and we can also use a drop shadow if we turn that on you can see that when we start to place it over the sky in the background at the top then we kind of fix that a little bit although you might want to play around with the, the blur as well and then we can move into more advanced options the video so we need to select the video layer um, and then we can drop into our effects and drop the highlights so we can darken the video a little bit which you can see will make the text more visible and then we can use a, a shape mask to actually allow us to just mask out the areas that we need to so that, that text is more visible rather than the the whole video itself so we still kind of get that nice punchy color with the rest of the video but we're not obscuring the type around those clouds so you can see now that text is visible even though we're moving it over that white area in the sky so the same would count for the text if we moved it down here we could also darken that area of the video um, so that the, the text pops a little bit more and we can modify this shape so that the color adjustment that we're applying here if we jump in there is only being applied to that small area of the video and with something like this less is more you don't want to overdo it um, but you can help your text to pop just that little bit more from the background by applying these kinds of changes so let's click out of here and come back to our text so one thing um, we can do with text obviously is add some animation to it um, but before you get into animation and keyframes it's worth having a go at adding transitions to your type so if you come to the transitions across on the right hand side a couple of the really useful ones are the movement transitions so for instance if we take something like the slide and add it to our type here uh, then we can see um, we get a very quick slide on which for the most part will will do the job that we need it to uh, for any animation so we don't need to always think about animating our type you will get some funny things happening um, so with the slide at the end here you can see we get this slide weirdness um, happening where it's transitioning with the layer in the background and with some of these transitions there's just no way to fix that um, easily so often i will add a slide in at the beginning for effect and then I will use something like a dissolve, a quick cross dissolve, will work on the layer above to fade that out. We can of course um, add our own movement, so if we do want to have this slide out at the end, then we can highlight the type, come to our transform options here, and then start to keyframe those transform options. So once we've turned our transform options on here, we can add a keyframe up here, move ahead in time, to the last frame so I'm just using the cursor so I can see the last frame of that type so the left cursor just to jump back one frame once I've snapped to the end there and then I can click and drag and move that off and then we get animation off so you can see we get that animation on and then the animation off at the end now if you do want to animate your type you may find that you don't get the speed of it right um, so then right click or control and click on your type layer that you've animated 
and go to show video animation and that will allow you to move those keyframes closer together so that we get a bit of a quicker animation. And we'll just click on the cross here to close the video animation. Hold down shift and tap Z to fit our timeline here. And I'm just gonna use shift, command and minus to zoom out the height a little bit. So now we can see we've added some type, we've modified a little bit of the color correction so the type pops a bit more and then also done a keyframe animation to animate that type out. So that's a quick introduction to how to add type in Final Cut Pro 10. There's lots more things to consider there as well. And you can also make your own generators in Apple Motion and that you can then use in Final Cut Pro 10. And I'll be showing some of those tutorials in the near future.